Divers in Italy are continuing their search for six passengers who went missing after their luxury British yacht sank off Sicily. The British tech tycoon Mike Lynch, Morgan Stanley's chairman Jonathan Bloomer and Clifford Chance lawyer Chris Morvillo are among those missing. Divers have been able to identify the wreckage 50 metres below the water's surface but have been prevented from accessing the cabins due to furniture blocking the hatches. Well, let's talk now to Stuart Campbell, the editor-in-chief of uh, Boat International. Stuart, welcome. Good to see you. Um, how do you think this happened? Well, it's only speculation at this point, but it seems the yacht was uh, the victim of, of a freak, sudden, and very explosive weather event that was not forecasted. Obviously, the, the captain would never have put the boat in any intentional danger, so he anchored where he did in the anticipation of a quiet evening. Uh, gentle offshore breezes were forecast, and yet suddenly at 4 a.m. this violent weather happened, and it was sufficient to knock the boat over and sink it. But it, you know, it's very, very unusual for this to happen, and it's almost unheard of for a boat of this size and quality of construction to be sunk the way it did. Why would the passengers on board be trapped within the vessel? It's, it's, it's hard to say at this point without any firmer details from the divers who are uh, inspecting the wreckage at the moment, but I can only speculate that they were in their cabins when it happened and they were unable to exit their cabins, given the fact that it was in the middle of the night. Does a, a yacht like this, a super yacht like this, undergo severe weather testing? I mean, you say this is an unusual weather event, but I mean, it's not unknown, is it? It's not unknown. The Mediterranean has several very strong winds. The Mistral, the Bora, the Meltemi, for instance, they can cause quite a lot of trouble for boats in the Mediterranean. Just last week, there was an event which uh, drove some boats onto uh, the beach in Formentera. But a, a, a weather event of this violence and immediacy is, is quite unusual. And for it to strike a boat, obviously, they're very isolated. So it seemed that Bayesian was just in a, a terrible place at a terrible time. And it was a complete freak of nature. Obviously, boats, um, they have to submit to class survey. They are all flagged by, uh, in this case, a UK flag. So they are inspected deeply, forensically, for safety flaws. They undergo significant sea trialing before they're delivered to their owners. They're subject to intense surveys every five years. Uh, Bayesian's one was fairly recently in 2000, uh, sorry, in 2023. So the boat, was checked out, it was passed, it was seaworthy, which only goes to, only adds to the shock and utter disbelief that something like this could happen to such a quality boat. A lot's been talked about uh, the VIP passengers, but I wonder if we know anything about the, uh, the crew on board. I mean, presumably this is a very tightly knit community. It's an extremely tightly knit community. So, Within a few degrees of separation, everyone knows everyone in the super industry. So this has affected everyone who's involved in it uh, directly or indirectly. So it's, it's deeply shocking and devastating for everyone. We understand all the crew got off the boat. They would have mustered um, trying to get uh, – They would obviously they all have to have minimum uh, safety training to be crew members on the boat. Some of them would have been incredibly highly skilled. They would have mustered as many guests as they could to get them off the boat. Um, so – yeah, I, I can. At the moment, everyone's a bit staggered. Uh, I've spoken to experts today and yesterday throughout the day, and we are all just clutching at straws at the minute, trying to figure out how a boat of this size and scale could be sunk so quickly in the Mediterranean. Stuart, thank you for your time. Uh, Stuart Campbell, the editor in chief of Boat International.